what does Pascal want to be a top five player in the NBA? Siakam, what does his next gear look like? Does he have a next gear? And if he does, what does it look like? So um, I am incredibly high on Pascal Siakam. I feel like with, with Raptor fans, and I'm talking like I'm so optimistic about this team, Lord knows what, what's going to happen this regular season. But like, whereas I feel like lots of people are high on what Scotty Barnes can do this year or high on what OG Ananobi can do this year. I'm kind of like they're question marks and they've got a lot to prove. All my stock is in two guys. Rajas Achua being the greatest basketball player of all time. But maybe not this year. <laughs> um, but like a lot of it is in what Pascal Siakam can do. Now, top five player is a, a, an astronomical leap and something that I know. Probably not. But um, in order to get to that point, what he would need to do is develop a pull-up three. That, that's it. Like if he can do that and he can just absolutely be unstoppable. In fact, like looking at OG's numbers... <laughs> in ISO situations and like some of his pull-up numbers made me really appreciate what Pascal Siakam was able to do in negative spacing. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, I was just like, oh, Pascal's pretty good um, when I saw what, what OG's numbers sort of looked like there. But I think for Pascal, if he's looking to make that next step, it's really that. And um, honestly, like looking at his pull-up, his pull-up numbers were not bad last season from two. <laughs> they were bad from three <laughs> and if you're looking at that bubble year where he you know broke out and was an all-star starter and an all-nba second team player i think a large part of that was that pull-up three-point shooting was much better at points in the season and and that's what made him look like a superstar last season was a better season for him overall if you're taking into account the entirety of his game um it was very like in season in that second post Kawhi see that first year post Kawhi Leonard where he broke out he was really inconsistent which I think is something that like doesn't really get taken into account where it'd be like one game he might have 30 points on like 50 percent or 60 percent shooting you're like oh my goodness and then the other like two games right after that it might be around low 40s and it wouldn't be as high but it would sort of balance out to being pretty much the same numbers that he was able to put up last season and Last season, I think he was just a lot more consistent, and he was able to do that with limited spacing. Uh, his pull-up numbers improved. His ISO numbers improved. He, in terms of like how often he was doubled, I think it was like first, second, or third most in the league. It's pretty high. Yeah, up he was there. up there when I was looking at that. Yeah, it was it was pretty high up there. And what he has done really, really well as a credit to him is playmaking. Um, as someone who watched a lot of DeMar DeRozan, and granted, he's become such a stellar playmaker, but part of it was he'd get trapped and it would look like you would watch his brain just shut down and him being like, what do I do? Um, and uh, you've seen that improvement from DeMar DeRozan, and that's a complete testament to his game. But with Pascal Siakam, you're already seeing it. There's the, it just the offense really does flow, and that's where OG's able to attack. That's where Gary's able to attack. That's part of how the Raptors run their offense. So with Pascal, I think he's really improved all of the other aspects of his game. I thought he was one of the Raptors' most impressive defenders at large points last season, despite being their leading scorer. So for him, if he wants to elevate himself into being in that category of top five or top ten, it would have to truly be that pull-up three-point shooting. I caught a lot of shit on Twitter because I was, I'm was i still trying to decide what my MVP pick is going to be, and I was weighing <laughs> Steph and Giannis, and my two dark horses were Zion and Siakam. And I got a lot of pushback on both Zion and Siakam, obviously, because that's how those things work. Uh, if he has a pull-up three, though, and given how well he defended last year, and I feel like some of the stuff he does on defense fades into the abyss because of just the Raptors having all these like-sized players who are wreaking havoc all over the place. Um, I think he could enter that discussion. I just don't. The pull-up three stuff, um, and he shot, I think we said like 36.5 on catch and shoots last year from deep, yeah. which is like, that's fine. You'd like it to be a little bit higher. Um, why have his like pull-up three-point attempts actually dipped is it a function of his role the spacing like when you go back a couple years like he was up to like two attempts a game right. and then it dropped and last year i think he was at like half attempt or like 0. 0.8 attempts per game or something wildly low it i i, I do think that like it, see that that's going to be one that's going to be one thing that sort of op changes the Raptors offense. I think people keep pointing to like, why don't the Raptors run a lot of pick and rolls? Why don't the, and I'm like, they don't really have anyone who can pick and pop. Like none of their bigs can actually like you trust them taking that outside shot. If he can show that he can shoot off the dribble from deep and do that consistently. I like, yes, he enters that top five. He enters that MVP category. And I do think for him, I think a drop in it was just the Raptors offense as a whole. I just, and, and also like, to point to those numbers that you were talking about two seasons ago, I think one thing that 
people sort of lose is like he came into that season or he came in that off season. His goal was to truly improve his three point shot and especially off the dribble. And he had a full summer kind of, he had a championship shortened summer because of the, because of the championship, but that was his like an actual summer to work on that. Mm -hmm. And then these last two summers, he's had none. Like we talk about how short it was for everybody else, but he had shoulder surgery last year. So he didn't have anything. And then the summer before that, was the Tampa year where everything was sort of out of whack for the Raptors specifically more so than any other team. And so he, this is his first actual summer. Uh, he also had a groin injury. So this is the first actual summer to work on his game. And he's been doing that all year with Rico Hines. And I think Pascal knows that taking threes off the dribble, pull up threes um, needs to be it. And even his catch and shoot numbers, they're a little bit funky. Yes, they're not bad, but they were not bad from the corners. <laughs> and yeah, I think yeah. that sort of brings it up um, and everywhere else. And even in this preseason, <laughs> the Raptors, I think it, it's it's um it's been sad to watch their three point shooting, and it's kind of tempered my expectations a little bit with this team. But I think hopefully as things start to roll around, it'll be a lot better. But with Pascal Siakam, I think the shot is the main focus of his game. I think that opens up the entirety of the Raptors' offense if if he does bring that in.